everyone. Welcome to MassBio's weekly town hall with President and CEO Bob Coughlin. I'm Jenny Mason, Senior Director of Communications at MassBio. And today we have a special guest with us. Brian Johnson is President of the Massachusetts Medical Device Industry Council, or MassMedic for short. And he's here to share some more details along with Bob about an exciting announcement from our two organizations today about a new alliance that's going to benefit our members and the life sciences industry in Massachusetts. Welcome, Brian. Welcome, Bob. Thanks, Jenny. Thanks, Jenny. All right. So before we dive into some questions, um, we do want this to be interactive with audience. So please just jump in and ask your questions. Um, we're going to be taking as many as we can. So you'll see the option for a live Q&A on the bottom and um, we'll get to them as soon as we can. So just to kick it off, I know uh, most of the people on here are MassBio members, so are familiar with MassBio. But Brian, I was wondering if you can tell us a little bit about MassMedic and how you support your members in the life sciences industry in Mass. Sure, thanks, Jenny. Um, so I, I'm lucky enough, I have the privilege to lead the MassMedic, which is the Device Industry Council of Massachusetts and, and New England, but primarily Massachusetts, where we have a robust uh, medical technology medical device ecosystem. Uh, we represent about 300 companies uh, who are all engaged in the building, the design and the servicing and the, uh, of medical technology, medical devices. It's um, an incredibly diverse uh, product portfolio. We represent everybody from sort of Band-Aid makers up to surgical robotics. Uh, much like Mass Bio, you know, we were, uh, our, our history is kind of our intertwined in a lot of ways. Uh, you know, we serve our members in a variety of, of forms, mostly uh, through community and ecosystem building, uh, creation of events, education opportunities, uh, business connections, but also all the way up through advocacy and uh, helping our uh, constituents um, interact with government to make sure that we have a, a, a favorable business environment in the state. Awesome, thank you so much for that. Um, and Bob and Brian, I mean, how did this alliance transpire? What made you want to partner originally? Well, you know, for us at MassBio, for the last 13 plus years that I've been involved with MassBio, we've always worked closely with MassMedic. I mean, it's, 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 we're fortunate in Massachusetts to have a critical mass of biopharma companies as well as device and diagnostic companies that they could sustain two separate organizations. And that was really, it, it's really a good thing from a policy standpoint. But what we found that working closely over the last, you know, 10 plus years, especially when combination products came into play, we found that, you know, you'd have a lot of uh, therapeutics that would be coded on a device, right? And as combination products came into play, we found that there was a lot more that we could do together. So when it when you it looks like when you take a look at things like the programming that we do and now not just combination products but diagnostics devices and everywhere where we're going as it relates to digital health it's so much there's so much synergy there and 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 convergence has really forced us to come together and work on common issues and you know we're always going to have our own agenda as it relates from a policy standpoint to the biopharma industry and devices and, and diagnostics. They have different political uh, issues and policy issues and we'll continue to work them as, as a team, but there's so much more we could do from an events, programming, professional development, and, and MassMedic is such an amazing organization and MassBio has been doing a great job as well. And, and with the leadership of Brian on, on board now at MassMedic, we were trying to figure out what is it that we can do together? How can we form this amazing alliance so that we can ensure that Massachusetts stays on top as the best place in the world for the life sciences? It's not just biotech, it's not just devices. And when you look at where the life science initiative came into play back in 2008, it's not just about biotech and devices, it's the life sciences. And you know, with MassMedic, MassBio, and the Massachusetts Life Sciences Center as our point of contact in government, all working together. I mean, you've seen what we've been able to accomplish. That's great. And we actually just got a question from the audience. Um, they want to know how MassBio and MassMedic came together to work on the emergency supply hub. 
Sure, I, I, I will, I, I'll be happy to, <laughs> I'll, I'll be happy to answer that a little bit. I just wanted to add on to something Bob said. Um, you know, it's an extremely rare occurrence where you have a region that can sustain multiple trade associations within the life sciences cluster. Um, that is a real source of strength for our industry. The fact that we can have two independent organizations that can represent these two, um, you know, uh, these multiple sort of stakeholders. I mean, Massachusetts, I've been all over the world like Bob has, and, uh, you know, there's not another ecosystem in the world in terms of life sciences that has the, sh the strength in terms of um, not only sheer number of companies involved in life sciences, but the diversity of companies. Um, and, and I think that's the beauty of the fact we're coming together in an alliance form, but we're actually still totally independent organizations, which is yes. an incredible testament to, to Massachusetts and, and really to the, the brains and the minds that are here. Uh, Mass Medic, um, you know, I've, I've long admired, I've only been a Mass Medic for about, you know, 20 months, but I've always admired Mass Medic and I've always admired Mass Bio and I always, uh, you know, was amazed that we could support these two industries. Um, and uh, so that's what's very exciting to me. Uh, I think also uh, this is the emergency supply hub is a perfect example of why now uh, this it matters more than ever. Um, Bob and I uh, both uh, about, I think maybe 21 days ago, I can't even remember the days kind of. <laughs> like have it's blended. like one long day. <laughs> it's like one really yeah. long day. <laughs> Yeah, we uh, started getting calls from lawmakers uh, three weeks ago, um, trying to figure out, you know, we're in the midst of a healthcare crisis, and we don't know enough about this industry. So they came to us um, to help uh, craft a response in a lot of ways. And I think um, the beautiful part, uh, about, and sort of, you know, getting thrown together in the fire here is that you know, our organizations came together and figured out a, a roadmap by which the state could start to react to this healthcare crisis in real time. Um, so, you know, that was, uh, I just think, an incredible experience. Bob, why don't you give a little more color on that, though, because I yeah, think it's, well, a, it's a true success story. Yeah, and it's something that's been modeled around the country, and we can give some examples of that. You know, going back a few weeks ago, we were fielding a lot of questions from folks in government who needed to meet with C-level folks from companies that could solve the PPE issue, the testing issue, reagents, assays, et cetera, et cetera, ventilators. So, so many requests were coming in from our world-class academic medical center leaders, as well as folks in government, that we felt that it was important in short order. I mean, first thing on the Monday morning after this was really hitting home, we got on the phone with, with MassBio, MassMedic, Mass Health and Hospital Association, the Council of Boston Teaching Hospitals, and we decided that, hey, they had all the needs. We had folks between our two organizations, over 2,000 member companies that may have supplies in their storage rooms in, at our member companies that were in Massachusetts that we could make available to the healthcare workers that are working on the front line. The idea came up of the supply hub, we built it out in 24 hours. We launched it in 48 hours. And, you know, close to 500 companies, whether they're mass bio or mass medic companies, have answered the call and then been distributed to the healthcare workers, whether they're at our major academic medical centers or our safety net hospitals. And, and working with Mass Health and Hospital Association on that, it's brought us closer together as well, not just mass bio and mass medic, but the closeness that, that is, has occurred with our, our, our colleagues on the hospital side of things, as well as that point of contact with government. We have been in regular contact with government, responding to their needs, and not only responding to their needs, now we're talking about what's next. How do we focus on testing? How do we focus on safe back to work plans? Those are the things that you know, your trade associations are working on now to make sure that government has the playbook they need to move forward and get us all out of this. But it's been, it's been a wonderful experience, and Brian, I. I, I, I'm sure you agree that we're both grateful that this alliance didn't just, we, we're announcing it, announcing it today, but it really did start, you know, almost a year and a half, if not closer to two years ago, when we started talking about this. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, did, it did start um, right as soon as I took over the, the position. And um, I, I think, 
you know, timing is, is everything in this world. So, I mean, it's an incredible, uh, I mean, we jumped, we jumped in together because we both care deeply about the Commonwealth and the people in this and, and the health of our citizens. Uh, but we also are very passionate advocates of our companies that we mm -hmm. represent. Um, and our, I know, and I know that your members of, as well have been just chomping at the bit to get into the fight and have been in the fight and are really some of the unsung heroes in all this. Um, you know, it's amazing to me what it has done is redefined to me what the role of a trade association is. You know, we, yeah. we, we have acted in many ways like an NGO more than a trade association, mm -hmm. you know, in a combined effort. And we've also done something that I think is really critical. And I think I want all the members to really understand this. Government can only react to what is going on in front of them. They are overwhelmed by the situation they find themselves in. So it is critical that industry helps provide um, a pathway for how we come back. We're gonna have to build our own life rafts here, guys. And you know that's what your trade associations are, are doing right now, is trying to help build the structures so that we can get everybody back to work. Because we know you're critical. We know that your work is critical in this fight. And to that point, Brian, from a policy standpoint, um, when you think about what's next, you, we can't expect our partners in government to uh, get ahead of any of these unintended consequences as it relates to certain orders, rules, statute changes in the future. So everybody on the call, you can rest assured, uh, that, rest assured that we are going to continue to try to anticipate unintended consequences and make sure that we continue to collaborate and communicate effectively with folks in government so that we can do the best possible for our collective member companies to stay in business. We need to keep science going. We need to clearly define what is what is essential versus non-essential in times like these. And there's so many, uh, we have done an amazing job refocusing or changing or pivoting towards uh, COVID-19 research, development, diagnostics, et cetera. But it's also important that we don't take our eye off the ball as it relates to all of the unmet medical needs that the amazing men and women at all of our companies go to work to fight each and every day. And we're gonna to continue to do that. Yeah, that's actually a great segue, Bob, into our next topic. And I think the Supply Hub is a perfect example to the testament and the impact our collective organizations can have. Um, and another thing we talk a lot about is kind of this power of convergence of how you know, devices, um, diagnostics, therapies are all coming together to have a real impact on patients. So can you talk a little bit more about, you know, how this alliance can support further convergence and what impact that is going to have for patients? Yeah, if we're going to operate seamlessly and not have these, you know, silos built up in our industry, it's very similar to what we tried to do, what we did do back in 08, 09, and 010. You had the biotech industry and the pharma industry. Well, it's the biopharma industry now. If you look at how drugs are discovered and the fact that people really believe we'll have companion diagnostics to show the efficacy of drugs moving forward. I mean, we, these lines are so blurred as it relates to drug discovery, digital health, diagnostics, et cetera. If we're gonna continue to succeed and stay on top, remain the best place in the world for this industry, and also do what's best for patients, because that's what everybody in the life sciences does. And Brian was talking about our passion and our love for our member companies, it's because what they do for sick people, right? We're all patient driven. That's why we do what we do. And this convergence piece, I, I mean, all the different sectors in, in life science mm -hmm. are converging. You look at devices, digital tech, biopharma is already creating unbelievable opportunities to transform patient care and drug discovery using all of that technology that's available out there. And a lot of that falls in the mass medic membership. So this is something that has to be done if we're gonna to continue to do the best work we can for sick people and patients. Perfect. Brian, do you have anything to add to that? I mean, I think, you know, confined within med tech, I mean, you see a tremendous convergence of technologies. I mean, I can't think of anything more, uh, better example than say robotic surgery, which is really the combination of 10, 20 technologies all into one sort of massive operating system. And if you look at what this crisis has taught us um, as a community, it is that we're gonna need a tremendous amount of 
innovation in the space in the area of telemedicine and robotic surgery to, in order, you know, healthcare workers getting sick is a major issue. Um, so, you know, I think you're going to see a big push for that. Um, I think this alliance in terms of what pathways it opens up through the New England Edge and some of the educational opportunities, um, just it, it is, a, I think it's a big signal to our, all of our players in this space that, you know, we're all in the same life sciences ecosystem. Let's utilize each other's brain power and resources and see what happens there. I've just always been a big believer in that you bring smart people together and reduce the, ba the barriers that they, that they have. Um, and, and then let them go. So I, I have, you know, as a healthcare system, you know, we are all, all these technologies are converging into one anyways. And, and like I said, we need to be ahead of that. So as, as the trade association is responsible for the, the primary players, it's our, it's our, it really incumbent upon us to, to continue to, to try and reduce the barriers to making that happen. Perfect. And we have a few more questions coming from the audience. Um, Ted, we're actually going to have a webinar on the CARES Act tomorrow at 1 p.m., so we'll save that question, but we urge you to register and join us then to have all your questions around the CARES Act answered. Um, and then James, um, James is asking, you know, seeing as testing is still a major issue in this pandemic, how can the biotech community further assist the diagnostic bottleneck? I, I mean, the majority of the calls that I've been on today, yesterday, over the weekend and last week has all been around diagnostics and how do we, how do we test people rapidly? How do we do it in an efficient way? How do you use the new Abbott technology and several other point of care type technologies that are out there? How do we get them approved by the FDA in short order so that we, and then how do we actually get them built in here? A lot of those, uh, a lot of that machinery was built in, in China as well. And there has been some difficulty getting products out of China to, to the US. So now we're looking at how we can manufacture more of them. Uh, there's about nine different companies right now that we're working with to help them as it relates to diagnostics. Because again, to our earlier point about how do we, and the things that we're focusing on now collectively, how do we test people so that we can get people back to work safely? We wanna come up with a game plan, a blueprint, a playbook, for lack of better terms, that we can hand off to our partners in government so that we can get people back to work safely. This isn't gonna happen overnight and you can't do it without diagnostics. And people need to realize this, didn't, this stuff didn't exist you know, several weeks ago and now it's happening really fast. So there's certain cases where we need to fly the plane while we're building it and people are just gonna have to accept that and we're gonna have to figure it out as we go. I think the most uh, encouraging thing that I've seen, and, and Brian, we've been side by side through all of this, is that it's amazing how resourceful people are. It's amazing how the sense of urgency and how many people just want to help and get this done quickly. And it's truly amazing uh, how we've seen results of companies that have been able to invent stuff really, really, really quick. Like it, it blows my mind that this wasn't done sooner in the past, but we haven't had this catastrophic crisis in the, in the past in our lifetimes. Uh, and the technology to, to react to it. So that's been a refreshing thing. Yeah, I would, I would just add uh, to James's question. I think where we are going to need, where, the, where we really need testing is to figure out who has had and been exposed to COVID-19. Um, we need to really focus on how we get back to work. Mm. Uh, I think that's the most important question that our communities can be working on at this point. Um, I would I would sort of say like to me this COVID nineteen is a little bit like uh, being caught in a riptide at the beach. Um, you know you you know there's there's three there's three steps right. As soon as you get sucked out, you can't fight the current. Try to swim against it. You have to let it suck you out, and that's the, that's the scariest part, right? Uh, you're out of control. The thing is sucking you out. You think you're going to end up in Portugal. Uh, but the reality is, is, if you don't try to fight the current and you let it take you out and you survive that, then you can swim. Then the next step is swimming parallel to the shore and then trying to get back in. Right now, we are stuck in the riptide. And I think everybody's trying to figure out everything all at once. Um, as an industry, what we should really be thinking about is not the being sucked out of the riptide, but how do we swim back to shore? I think that is the best thing that our our brains can work on and, and, and that, that really involves 
uh, that, that to antibody testing and testing to see if we've had exposure. So the more people we can get working on that is, is critical. And, you know, we will support, uh, we can, both our organizations will help support those ideas. There's tons of resources. Um, there's tons of companies in my membership that are dying to help, um, that are looking for ways to help um, to develop and build these tests. And I know, Bob, you have the same. Your, your, your inbox is flooded as well. Um, I will also say, you know, I, I, uh, in terms of the CARES Act and the uh, equity piece, in terms of companies with equity investment not being eligible, um, I, I, you know, I think we're going to get some update on that uh, this week. I, I know that that has been um, a, a national issue. We signed a letter. I'm sure you guys have done a lot of lot, uh, advocacy on this. I can assure you that we're all, I mean, we think that's a, a ridiculous rule and we're trying to make sure it gets done, but it's, uh, that's being worked on on a national level. So you can, we can promise you, Ted, that, that, that we're, everybody's all hands on deck on that issue. Thank you very much for that, Brian and Bob. Um, before I go back to the audience question, I'm just gonna um, refocus on this alliance that we announced earlier today. And Bob and Brian, you know, what aspects of this alliance do you think is gonna have the most value for each of the respective memberships? I mean, from our standpoint, it's going to be content. We need to better align the content that we provide to our industry. And if MassMedic and MassBio are working together on events that we do together, whether they're virtual or in person, right? We're, we're showing that you can do this virtually for the time being, and we will do it as long as need be. But ultimately, we will we'll get back to doing these uh, our, doing events together. And the content, if as we as the two trade associations drive content together, it will encourage and enable the companies to do business better together. We've seen this accelerated through this crisis. I mean, you, you can't have the equipment without the test kits, you can't have the test kits without the reagents, et cetera. And it goes on and on and on. And we've learned so much about it in the last several weeks. So I think for us, it's content. And it's also the fact that we're treating the life sciences industry here in Massachusetts, whatever that was yesterday, whatever it is today, and whatever it will be tomorrow, we're treating it as one life sciences industry. And I think that's extremely valuable. And we're not reinventing the wheel. We're sharing a lot of resources with one another. And, and that gives us more time to focus on what we need to as individuals by sharing resources that are already built in place. Thank you, Bob. Brian, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, Jenny. Uh, first of all, uh, you know, when we, the New England Edge, I think, which is really the key piece of this alliance, um, it is in the first world-class, first-rate program led by local New England companies, and I, this, I just, I thought it was a phenomenal program the first moment I took a look at it. It opens up so many opportunities for our members to save. Uh, you know, I think the numbers I saw is, you know, biomass bio members are saving more than 175 million each year in lab office supplies. I mean, what a, what an incredible program that is. And, and I really wanted our members to be able to take advantage of that and to take advantage of the fact that if we combined our uh, resources on that New England edge, you know, we could secure even better rates for all our organizations. Right. I think that program um, is going to pay huge dividends for our members and help help them get the savings they need. And at a time now where, you know, there are gonna be some resource constraints coming out of this, we're gonna to need to save every bit of money we can. Uh, I think secondly, the, the past three weeks have been a perfect example of what can happen when these two organizations work together. I, I, I don't think, you know, I, I don't think I'm, I'm being a little, you know, braggadocious to say like, we set the standard for the rest of the country in terms of that supply chain. I mean, I, I have seen yeah. uh, Minnesota, California. I mean, the, those are those are really strong life science hubs with great trade associations. And they were like, that's a brilliant idea. We're going to do that too. And the fact that the state adopted it is huge. So, you know, I think it's it's the New England edge in terms of what that can produce for our members is going to is is incredibly advantageous. But I think it's the the shared intellectual capital um, that is the real kind of um, I think that's the real long-term value here is, is think of what we can do if we put uh, some of these, get, create a form by which some of these members can talk and create and produce. I mean, I think the sky's the limit in terms of what we can do. 
You had a follow up on that, Brian. The supply hub, once we got it built, we were able to talk to Pennsylvania, Connecticut, Kansas, California, Washington State, and within 24 hours, they were able to launch their own supply hub using the database and the ingredients and the communications plan that we built out. So it was felt really good to be able to share that program with our colleagues from all over the country. Thank you both. Um, we're gonna take one final question from the audience and then I know we're, we're almost at time, but Brian, this is more for you. Um, what are some of the policy issues your members are most focused on? Sure, I mean, it feels like uh, ancient history when we were in <laughs> Washington, D.C. on the last week of February. Uh, but, I mean, we're, we're still focused and concerned about um, reimbursement in med tech. It's still a major issue. Um, breakthrough products, uh, there's a breakthrough product designation at the FDA, but it does not, you know, the, the, the reimbursement associated with that is not enough really. Um, and we, we, we've been, we were working on gaining support for some legislation that would increase the amount of reimbursement companies would get and try to harmonize a little bit more um, reimbursement to new tech. I mean, in med tech, um, it, it, it's different from pharma in that when you produce a breakthrough new drug in pharma, I mean, I don't think there's as much of a, a crapshoot in terms of what reimbursement you're gonna get, but med tech, we're still, you know, reimbursement still lags innovation and that's a big issue. Um, and then there's a, you know, there was a, you know, there was a host of other issues too that we're, we're always tracking here and there. Um, I think there's gonna be a whole host of new issues coming out of this crisis. So, you know, we have our eye on this pretty close, but um, I would say reimbursement is the big, is the big picture issue that we're always trying to solve as an industry. Perfect, thank you, Brian. Well, I know we're just coming up on time, but I just wanted to first say that, you know, if anyone wants to learn more about this new alliance, you can visit massbio.org and visit our news and thought leadership page as well. And then Brian, um, should they go to massmedic.org if they want to learn more about Massmedic? Absolutely, it's massmedic.com. Um, and uh, please come, uh, you know, we're, uh, my background is in media and in and, and content. So, uh, you know, we're, we're trying to improve the website every day. We have a COVID-19 resource page up. Um, that we're trying to update frequently. And uh, you can also come check out our events. And I would invite you all also, you know, we hold a, a town hall on um, Thursdays at noon and we'd love to have you join. You know, we use it as a, a way to share resources in this crisis um, to connect. And, you know, we're doing a whole lot of online programming as I know you guys are as well. So um, already uh, looking to learn more and, um, I, I really invite everybody to come over and, and join us for our town hall. We'd love to have you. Perfect. Thank you so much. Bob, do you have any more parting words before we regroup next Tuesday at 11 a.m.? Yeah, I just want to use a nautical analogy because, Brian, you use such a great one with the riptide. I just want to let everyone know, hey, smooth seas never made for a skilled sailor. And when all of this is done, we are all going to be much more skilled at what we do. Uh, so just hang in there. You know, that we will get through this. And everybody, you can rest assured that everybody at, at MassBio and MassMedic, all of our member companies are working so hard to try to get through this the best we can. And we're here for you. So, so hang in there and we'll see you next Tuesday, same time, same place. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you, you so much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you, Bob.